things have kept getting in the way and I kept failing to commentate. So we're doing this a fourth time. This is actually my third time doing this video and my fourth time doing commentary. This is going to be post commentary this time. And just because I don't want to go through this BS ever again, it's probably for the best that I record this in chunks, actually, so multiple post-commentary tracks. Uh, the first whole take was a bust because I got interrupted, and that threw off my whole tempo and made me forget one important thing I wanted to talk about in that take. Fortunately, I only yesterday remembered what I forgot to talk about, but that's to be discussed in a later video, though. Second take was post-commentary, to patch up what I messed up in my first take. But the problem with that is, uh... I felt like I said way, way too much. And even then, it wasn't actually everything I originally wanted to talk about. But either way, the topic I talked about was a bit too sensitive. And it occurred to me that I should be more civil and brief because the subject at hand was talking about my family. And I really shouldn't have to subject everyone to listen to a rant about a creator's parents or something. I should only be talking about what is ultimately affecting my ability to create content. That being said, it's still a bit too much talking about one specific person. And I'm probably gonna blather about everything spread throughout all my videos anyway, so eh. I tried redoing the video a second time and commentating a third time total. But I forgot to record game audio. Again. And I still said a little too much. Like, like I said earlier, it's really touchy and sensitive subject to me, especially for YouTube. And it's not like I can fit the whole rant into this video anyway. So you know what, it'd be less effort to do this from scratch again than to edit it left and right. Editing the second Sonic video and the bonus from Knuckles was way too much work for me. I really don't want to do it again. At least not now. And I really don't want to put more work than I already have for all of my projects, which is to be talked about in the later video. So from the Knuckles video, I took about a two month break before I started trying, trying to record Amy. And it's now been three full months since I'm recording this take. Now, the reason I took a two month break is because I had to go into standby mode because my sister went to the hospital. And so that made me very worried about her and I, I was also worried that she might have caught that. But thankfully she did not and neither the fact that she went to the hospital did either. However, after my standby mode, my left jaw started hurting really, really badly. It felt like the pain was more coming from the roots of two of my teeth that I talked about earlier. But it affected my entire jaw pretty much. At least the left half. And I kind of suspect it was because of this remineralizing toothpaste that we got. This toothpaste is supposed to be for scratches, more or less, not for entire cavities. So I suspect, so I suspect there was a lot of pain coming from uses of that. But I don't know. The pain lasted like two weeks, and it was like impossible to get comfortable. I had nothing to pass the time. And because I was in pain, I didn't feel comfortable doing anything passing the time either. Stuff like this just prevents me from doing anything at all. And relaxing is impossible. And even after that, my left eye started swelling up. Because 
I apparently got so angry that one of my vessels in my eye, I think, felt like it snapped or popped. And a couple days after that, it started swelling and blinking was painful. It's better now. I did feel pain in it a couple days ago. I don't know if it was still remnants of the swollen eye from that long ago. Or if it just happens from time to time. I'm really unsure. As minor as that is compared to my jaw, that's still enough to make me very uncomfortable to do anything. Alright, this is officially my fifth take doing this part of the commentary specifically. I just couldn't decide how I wanted to talk about this. But frankly, I'm so sick of these thoughts walling up inside me that I can do nothing about it. And because I don't trust my feelings and my mind to handle coming up with things to say on the spot, and I can't believe I'm doing this, I'm officially reading out a script, word to word. So I apologize if anything I say until my commentary sounds very scripted. You'll know why. Much time has went into preparing pseudo-scripts which required me to think on the spot, but now I have a full-on script. Anyway... One big thing getting in the way of recording is just how often my parents have to come anywhere near me or pass by, interrupting whatever it is I'm doing. My father is usually very loud and disruptive, but at least gets things done quickly. While my mother does her business in the adjacent room for a long time, even lasting an hour or two, it puts me in too high alert, disrupting my focus for doing any work. I just work best in privacy. Often my mother tries to get into my business, which I don't want to share, inclu including because including because she's not going to know anything about what I'm even doing half the time. However, what gets me angry, and managed to get me so angry that my eye is swollen up, is her interactions with our cat, whose name's Spot by the way, good name I know. She talks to him as if he'll understand what she's saying, and also responds to everything with a meow of her own. It's incredibly annoying to be forced to listen to since they always do it whenever our cat eats, which happens to be right next to my room's entrance on a table, even to a point where she says she's gonna go sit down now. It's the thing that builds my rage up the most, but it's not the only thing that drives me mad. Her spoiling the cat constantly with her aggressive love has led him to such annoying behaviors. The most aggravating to deal with is just whenever he needs something. The cat will just not convey what he wants. He expects us to just know. He will cry out meowing, even from across the entire house, until someone comes to him to fulfill his unconveyed needs. If you don't tend to him, it will take minutes for Spot to even take initiative of his own to come to somebody. At this point, he just sticks way too close to you as you try to figure out what he wants, all while making it difficult to move in the process. Even when at the destination, sometimes even that's not enough. He requires a specific person to be there for him. Either my sister or mother. Them existing next to him lets him eat apparently. This behavior is especially bad when it happens at night, meaning I'm not going to have any sleep in peace. The ramblings from our mother is also a problem when talking to us too, but she thinks we're very independent young children and can't accept the fact that we're grown adults. She feels like she has to know every little thing we're doing in our everyday lives and tells us the same in return. She forces herself into conversations, even overheard ones, and brings in as many offhand subjects as possible. She also doesn't seem to respect our privacy. She worries so much about us. It's so annoying. We just want to be left alone in peace for the majority of the day. And lastly, of the family that makes it hard to find a time to stream or record, is my sister. It's just that she has an inconsistent sleep schedule. Heck, I'm the only person around with one. But still nocturnal, that being said. Anyway, I can't really record when she's sleeping. And I can only record in our bedroom. 
I can't record anywhere else. Sometimes she also has voice calls with her friends, which means when that happens, I can't record or stream or do anything. The voice calls kind of make it difficult to focus on work or projects or planning as well. The train headed for Station Square will be Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that anymore. As of recording this in all previous parts of my commentary, and prior to that, my sis was still around. But recently, she moved out. This was an event I had to prepare my life for a long time, since I had to practice doing a lot of responsibilities that my sis normally does around here for all of us, as well as generally preparing for more solitude. I'm just not good with responsibilities, like, at all. But as a grown adult, I'm kind of, that's kind of expected of me at this point. A brief cut and intermission here, uh, also because I kind of needed some filler commentary to fill like a minute or two of dead air, because there wasn't enough commentary. Anyway, I just thought I'd point out that I like this part here, where I try to throw the old man into the target. Now keep in mind, I've always been doing practice run-throughs, and I took this at least three or four times at this point. The take you're viewing right now, as well as the previous take, and practice for this, I failed that throw so many times. Like, I'm seriously cutting out... Like, I was seriously cutting out a full minute of this. I don't need you to watch this. I, I just like how in every other instance I got this first try, but now in the previous three times I've done this, I, I just could not get this. Taking me a full minute or two even. Anyway, end of interruption. Back to the script. This, everything makes it so difficult to record and really do anything, as if preparing and doing this commentary and script wasn't hard enough to do on its own. Because I just can't decide whether something's okay to talk about or not, but I'm just so sick of it. Now why did my sister leave? It was because of her overall con living conditions, which concerns me too. And also having the wonderful option of living with one of her best friends and her family. Which is really freaking amazing. I'm happy for her for it. But anyway, our living conditions? We live in a shitty home in a terrible neighborhood that's already done too much offense to us. And also living with our mother is nigh impossible to her for reasons I already explained. But number one is that she procrastinates any chances or appointments to help improve our lives. And she's even went and done it to the point to where it really shows she's only doing this because she wants us to stay and nothing to change. When not only this is precisely the problem to begin with, but is only making us want to stay less. Just, yeah. Anyway, I think I'm done talking about my family like this. I'm really sorry this had to be read out in a script like this. But it was the only way for me to convey my feelings. And the best part is, none of this would have happened if I didn't get so angry that my eyes swell up. But now that you know who I'm dealing with, in far greater detail than I normally feel comfortable with, I'm done talking about this. Frankly, I'm just done hiding things and have them constantly on my mind, never escaping, becoming such a mess to talk and think about. But I'm glad I finally got this out of the way, never to deal with this ever again. I hope you understand. For reference, the first take of this video was March 18th. The video you're watching now was recorded April 22nd, 
This part of the commentary is being recorded May 23rd. Alright, I'll meet you back at live commentary. Okay, so this mission right here... Normally you have to press this button and open one of these five doors and just hope the sign is behind one of them. However, there's a much easier way to do this mission and it, that is to first you have to open every single door. Make sure you're in free camera mode. And with that, if the camera will adjust, you can look in all five rooms. And uh, I tested, I noticed in basically all my recordings and practice runs, the sign always appears back there. However, uh, there's still a chance the quote-unquote correct door to progress the stage normally is through this said door. And if that happens, you have to redo the whole mission again through no fault of your own. So good game design there. Although that's more of the fault of the mission mode devs and not the Sonic Adventure devs. Gosh dang, it was the last door. <laughs> yeah, it, it really blows. Anyway, uh, here ends post-commentary, all the snippets and bits. I'm really sorry I had to do it this way, but I had no easier time to do it than doing it like this. It was a really hard subject to talk about. And heck, even so, I I have to edit bits and pieces here and there. Like, this is this along with recording these. It's 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 been very very tough, and I'm so sorry that this one video in particular was basically the reason these videos are not coming out sooner than they really should. Anyway. I'll see you next time for Big, where we can finally talk about something way easier to talk about. As with Gamma. And Metal Sonic. So I'll see you then.